This is my Halo Infinite Water Splash Diorama and I'm going to show you how you can easily make something just like this. Having just done an exploding warthog, I thought it was time to do another classic from the Master Chief's vehicle stable, his mongoose. I love the Pacific Northwest vibe of Halo Infinite scenery, but this is a mongoose and I wanted a bigger splash than this. I started off designing the diorama with my World of Halo mongoose. It comes complete with Master Chief with rocket launcher. I want to fit it on this picture frame because it's a nice easy base. All you need to do is take the glass out and move the plywood to the top. To stop it warping I sealed it with matte Mod Podge and brown acrylic paint in a nice mix. I filled in the dip in the middle and raised some banks for the river edge using just off cuts of foam that I have lying around before moving on to putting a sculptor mould layer on to make the whole thing one seamless riverbank and river scene. When it was set up I used the same Mod Podge and brown paint mix to just make sure that there were no white bits showing through later on. Time for the earth. I'm using taupe tile grout by Larson. I sprayed water on the edges just to, the paint was still wet, but just to give it a bit of something to grip onto and lightly sprinkled it on with a sieve. Then more water to help with adhesion, just there's a few slight slopes here. Now this isn't actually just plain water, this is isopropyl alcohol and water, it's a wet water, it's about a third isopropyl alcohol. Then using something like a sieve, sprinkle on a very thin layer of tile grout across everything. Now you don't need to glue this tile grout before you do the next stage, which is the riverbed. And my favourite product for this is Woodland Scenics Talus. It comes in ranges from fine to extra coarse. And because of the way streams work, they have very rounded stones and the talus is very rounded, so it suits it perfectly. I start with the big stones and I place them around. Sometimes I paint them, in this case I didn't because I wanted them to show through the base quite quickly. And the taupe is quite a light colour. Once you're happy with it, you just need to glue it in place. Now to avoid disturbing it and to help the glue flow a little better, I spray on isopropyl alcohol and water, this wet water mix first. I find it just settles everything down. And then I go over it with a spray of the dilute matte Mod Podge. It's about a sixth matte Mod Podge to go through my spray bottle any thicker and it just won't spray. And that's sorted all the fine stuff out but these big rocks are not going to be glued by a fine spray of very dilute matte Mod Podge. So I went over them all with a th the same thin mix of matte Mod Podge and then I thought I don't think that's really enough. So I went over them with a about 50-50 mix of a quite a thin white glue and water just to make sure they weren't moving. Now a big feature of any water splash diorama is the water and for this I'm using Green Stuff World, thanks to them for sending it to me, epoxy resin, splash gel and UV resin and that was almost all I needed to do all of the water effects. The only thing I added was some polyfiber and some wooden scenic snow. Now I know where the splash is going to go and how big it needs to be, it's time to actually make it. And I'm using UV resin with a plastic bag underneath to stop it sticking and putting it over a bottle to make the round curved shape. It's not too thin so it doesn't run off and you can set it with a UV torch. I got this one from Green Stuff World ages ago. What I hadn't realised is it gives off quite a bit of heat when it's curing and it wrinkles the bag underneath, which gives a lovely ripply water effect. It was kind of a big win I wasn't expecting. But all you need to do is build up the layers. You put the first layer on, cure it with the torch and then put on a second layer. I made sure it was completely set by using my homemade UV curing chamber as well. Then it just peels off the bag. Simples. I made three of them before using a very, very professional looking jig made up of some blocks and three hot glue sticks. And I, I put the first piece hanging off the side so it would be curved. And I wanted this piece to be straight. So it's the bit at the bottom of the sploosh coming up. And you can just put more of the UV resin on, join it on, making sure there's no gaps onto that new piece and then set it and repeat a couple more times till you've got enough of the splush effect that you're after. 
So at this point I had three pieces of UV splash and I needed to join them together because I want this to sit on its own in the river. So I propped them all up with the plastic bag underneath to stop them sticking and I put on some UV resin and just formed out any gaps in between with a bit more splash. I carried on till the whole thing was freestanding. With the splash made, it's time to get on with the river. One exciting fact, if you're a modeler, that I learned from doing this diorama is that UV resin is an excellent glue. It gives you plenty of working time and then you just zap it with a UV torch and it's fixed. And that's what I used on the splash to hold it to the bottom. And when the next layer, which is the river, epoxy resin goes on, you literally can't see it. It makes such a good glue, I used it to glue my dams. And this is just thin sheet acetate. And if any of this gets stuck into the resin, no problem. It's just exactly the same look, clear. Now I did color my resin a little, but not a lot and not enough for this to show as a difference. I even used it to build up a layer at the end as an extra bit of dam up the sides. Otherwise your resin will just flow out the ends. And because I'd done this kind of sculptor mold edge, it wasn't perfectly square. And I could just fill the gap with more UV resin. And just a health note, I really should have been wearing gloves previously. I did get some on my hands. This is resin, it's not good for you. Please wear gloves. For the actual river, I used an epoxy resin. It's two part, two to one. I didn't bother measuring it because I just used the whole lot. So I tipped it in out of the bottle and added a tiny spot of blue dye, again from Green Stuff World. I've got to say, I'm not a fan of bright blue rivers and I like my base to show through. I put a lot of effort into it. I want it to be visible. A good stir, trying not to add too many bubbles. And it was time to pour it. And before long, the river was full. Normally, you have to pop bubbles. Not with this resin. It's crystal clear by Green Stuff World. Not a single bubble to pop. Brilliant. A day later, it was perfectly set, so I took off the dams. Resin waters tend to come up at the edges, so I just scraped off the very, very top of it with a knife. I mixed up some tar grout, PVA glue and water and applied it over the top of the edges where it just looked a bit weird. I was going to keep the vegetation really simple and just do grass, but I didn't just do grass. I ended up doing three types of grass plus reeds, plus some coarse turf as well for a bit of variety because, well, variety is the spice of life. So I did a six mil beige grass, followed by a 12 mil, could have been 10 mil, green grass. It's summer blend, so it's got a bit of brown in there as well. I followed that up with a short two mil bright spring grass. So that was my base layer of grass down. You can see it's a very simple technique. I put grass glue down, I put on the static grass with an applicator, but I hoover it up, which helps drag it slightly more upright if it's fallen flat, which is a problem with the really long pieces. But I wanted my grass to be taller. So I tore a hole out of a bit of kitchen roll and put it on the area where I wanted the grass and sprayed on some layering spray. It creates little areas of, you can use any glue for this, but this is just handy but it creates little areas of glue without getting everything else covered in it. But I wanted taller grass, so I added another layer. Hmm, still not totally happy. So whilst I was thinking about it, I added some green grass, the long 10 mil one too. For a bit more finesse, I used the drop bottle with the sort of 50-50 water and white glue mix to put on some clumps of the dark green. And then I went back to the beige area and used some of these, the, the bush reeds, wheat grass, whatever. And if you dip them in a bit of glue, these are actually off cuts of using up old stuff. If you dip them in a bit of glue, you can just plant them in your scenery. Finally, I added clumps of Woodland Scenic's light coarse turf, just for a little bit of variety so it's not all grass. When all the glue was dry, I added some more tar grout to sort of dirty down the grass so it's not too shiny and to just give a nice colour texture to all of the earth areas. 
I cleaned up the water where the tar grout had gone onto it and got rid of any static grass on it. And then I fixed it all in place with a spray of isopropyl alcohol and water. I didn't worry about glue, there's cement in the tar grout. With all the dirty scenery done, it was time to put the ripples on the river. Now I'm using Splash Gel by Green Stuff World for this. It's, it's a lovely gel actually, it um, dried really clear overnight. I am careful not to put it on too thickly, but if you do, it might take a couple of days to dry clear. One of my favorite ways to do ripples is just to use a paintbrush and to effectively paint them in. And that's what I did here. I did ripples back and forth on the main river part, but under the splash, I did a more stippled effect when it's dry you get a lovely effect that just glints in the light. But no water splash is complete without spray. And how to make it? Well I started with polyfiber and I've got landscaping glue which dries fairly shiny, but it's not landscaping glue, and woodland scenic snow. This actually turned out a lot easier than I expected. So tease out your polyfiber really finely. Drench them with glue. I used a fine spray bottle and yes, they blew away at first. And then sprinkle on woodland scenic snow. Now this is slightly granular, it's not very fine snow, so it creates the frothy bubble effect that we want. Then I drenched it with glue to make sure it all stuck on. I actually transferred them onto a different bit of paper at this point so that they didn't stick too much to this one. And to make sure they were really glossy like water, when the glue was dry, I took them outside and sprayed them with a clear lacquer. Time to make the mongoose and the master chief look a little bit less plasticky. Easier enough to do. First up, I just wanted to bring out some of the details. So I used enamel panel lining. It's a Tamiya product and I used it in black, dark gray and light gray to just put some depth into the shadows, cracks and details that just aren't visible on his plastic surface. Once it's set, you can clean off any excess with a cotton bud soaked in white spirit. I kept the weathering very light touch with a quick spray over the from the front generally on the mongoose and only the Master Chief's feet got any. Now everything is ready for that final assembly. So I used UV resin, because it's going to be nice and clear, to glue the spray on top of the water splash. I kept adding pieces until I covered the whole of the outside of the splash with spray. And then I did the same on the inside, just another layer of spray. Then I put the mongoose in place. Now this is totally removable, so I haven't coloured it with any gloss to make it look wet. I know that's a flaw, but I might use it somewhere else and I can just wheel it in and out of this diorama. Then all I did was cover the fact that the wheels weren't wet with more spray. I painted the edges black and it was time for the beauty shots. Before we finish the pictures, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button if you haven't already, and if you want to support me further, consider Patreon or YouTube channel membership. I do give something out every week. 
all that remains for me to say is thank you for watching. See you next time.